In this episode, Hado encounters fate. The adventurers offer themselves to take down fate, and Hado allows it. Together, they attack fate. Fate perceives the adventurers as moving very slowly, and Greed explains that it's due to a significant difference in their statuses. Effortlessly, Fate defeats those who attacked him, and two adventurers manage to escape. Now, only Hado remains. Trembling, Hado unsheathes his sword, preparing to face Fate. Hado is shocked when Fate removes his mask. He didn't expect the formidable opponent in front of him to be Fate. Hado threatens Fate, claiming to be a holy knight. Fate challenges him to demonstrate the power of a holy knight. Fate examines Hado's status and sees that Hado possesses skills unique to a holy knight, specifically mastery of the holy sword. Fate then asks Greed if he can destroy the holy sword, and Greed replies that he won't be defeated by a holy sword made with a mix of orichalcum. Relieved, Fate prepares to confront Hado. Feeling confident in his sword skills, Hado underestimates Fate and his sword. Without hesitation, Hado launches his attack. Fate easily evades it and, in an instant, is behind Hado. A sword clash becomes inevitable, and with one swift strike, Fate breaks Hado's holy sword. Hado is astonished, unable to believe that his holy sword could be broken so easily. Terrified, Hado slowly moves backward. Fate grabs Hado's collar and smashes his face into rocks and trees. Defenseless, Hado asks Fate to stop his actions. Furious, Fate recalls what Hado did to the weak in the past. Without mercy, Fate throws Hado into the air and attacks him with his bloody ptarmigan. Despite the gruesome fall, Hado survives. Fate intentionally spared him because there's something he wants to ask. Hado immediately understands Fate's intention and reveals Roxy's offer to go to Gallia to save lives. Hado says he will cancel Roxy's expedition to Gallia and begs Fate for forgiveness. Without mercy, Fate mercilessly stabs him and Hado perishes. Fate's gluttony skill activates, and the Holy Sword skill is added. However, Fate feels disgusted with the skill. Greed anticipated this and offers Fate to exchange it to unlock his second level. Greed transforms into a great scythe, capable of cutting through anything with the embedded Karukin. Fate expresses his desire to cut the destiny that forces Roxy to go to Gallia. The next morning, Roxy prepares to leave for Gallia, bids farewell to everyone in the house. To reassure them, Roxy mentions that three years will pass quickly and will feel like nothing. Finally, Roxy departs on her horse. Haru gives Fate a letter of recommendation from Roxy, ensuring that the Vleric family won't disturb him during his work. Fate is grateful for Roxy's consideration until the end but feels he cannot accept it. He decides to live his life as a warrior. Fate is determined that if he can't stop Roxy's expedition to Gallia, at least he can assist her directly. He bids farewell to the others, having earned a considerable amount from his salary and severance pay. In the palace, Roxy delivers her speech to encourage the entire army. She also meets Miria and Mugen, both of whom are joining the journey to Gallia. Mugen mentions that he was once in the same team as Master Mason and wants to avenge him. Elsewhere, Lene is in the laboratory. She and her colleague are researching and discussing Mukuro. In the lab, there are body parts of goblins attacked by Mukuro, and from the wounds, it's evident that it's not a typical arrow injury. Lene, observing the wounds, then looks it up in a book. She discovers that the wounds may be caused by enchanted arrows, one of the abilities of the Black Sword, one of the weapons of mortal sin. Weapons of mortal sin are made with materials that can manipulate magic power at a very high level. If this is magical power control, it's likely a skill. Intrigued, Lane wants to see the weapon of mortal sin. Fate has arrived in a city named Tetra, which is the trading center of the capital. He recounts that he visited this place five years ago on his way to the capital. Fate then encounters someone with a horse-drawn carriage and asks if it's heading to Gallia. The person responds negatively for today, as leaving now might lead to monster attacks along the way. Fate is told to come back tomorrow. Greed complains because they should be catching up with Roxy, but now they're stuck in this place. Fate's stomach growls and Greed suggests filling it and gathering information. Fate also predicts that in a trading hub like this, there must be a suitable sword chief for him. He asks for a sword chief made of orichalcum or magic stone. Fate continues to search for a place to eat, seemingly ignoring Greed's words. He enters a dining establishment and sees a man pleading with some warriors to save his village from monster attacks. However, they bluntly reject his request because the reward is too little. The warriors then bully the man. Fate arrives just in time and saves the man. 
Witnessing Fate's strength, they leave the place. The man from earlier was very grateful to Fate for helping him. Fate recognizes the man and calls him Set. The scene then shifts to a flashback of Fate's childhood. He is fetching water, and his stomach keeps growling. Other kids bully him, including Set, because Fate is always hungry and consumes a lot of food supplies. On another day, Fate is searching for plants with his father. When cries for help are heard, Fate's father swiftly defeats the attacking monster. Fate is amazed by his father's actions. Another day, Fate is seen concocting medicine for his father. His father praises him for becoming skilled at making medicine from plants. Fate responds that it's because his father is always getting injured. Eventually, Fate's father passes away, leaving Fate saddened. The villagers allowed Fate's father to stay in the village due to his spear skills. Now, with Fate's father gone, the village, resentful of the child who consumes much food, drives Fate away. The scene returns to the present, where Sat is pleading for Fate's help. Despite harboring resentment, Fate accepts his request on Greed's advice to suppress Fate's gluttony skill. In the village, Fate reminisces about his time with his father. In short, Fate arrives in the village. The village head, Sat's father, refuses to accept Fate, considering him trash expelled from the village. However, Sat convinces his father that Fate has become strong, and he witnessed it himself. Set's father blames Set for not finding a competent warrior. He decides that he himself will look for a warrior the next day. Some villagers doubt him, as monsters might attack that very night. Set's father suggests sacrificing Fate to buy time if that happens. Fate is about to act, but Set stops him, saying to obey his father for now. Now, Fate is at Set's home, and Set apologizes for his father's behavior. Fate says he's used to such treatment. Fate asks about Sat's wife, as he hasn't seen her. Set can only shake his head, and Fate realizes that Set's wife has been killed by monsters. Set then reveals that his village is always in poverty, and the village head's word is absolute. In the past, Set thought his father's principles were correct. However, since the birth of his daughter, Set felt he had to protect her. Fate also observes that Set has changed. Fate then asks Set to tell him about how the monsters attack their village. Set shares that the monsters first appeared a month ago, not just one of them, and they could fly. They were different from the usual village attacking monsters. Eventually, the villagers decided to hire a warrior without knowing the appropriate price. Greed explains that warriors indeed are a solution for small village residents, but when the monsters can fly, it becomes a different problem. Greed clarifies that these monsters might be gargoyles, fairly intelligent creatures. Initially, they attack to gauge the villagers' response, then they strike the village in groups when the time is right. While Greed and Fate discuss, Sat's daughter suddenly approaches and gives Fate a candy. Fate thanks the girl and eats the candy. Sat comes from the kitchen with food for Fate, and Fate eats it eagerly. However, as he's about to finish, his vision blurs and he suddenly feels extremely sleepy. Fate collapses on the dining table and faints. Sat is shocked to see this and asks if Fate ate something strange. His daughter confesses that she gave Fate a candy. She admits getting the candy from her grandfather, who was the village head, or Sat's father, who initially wanted to use Fate as a sacrifice for the monsters attacking the village. Greed realizes that the candy might have been laced with a sleeping potion. As Sat tries to wake Fate, he hears loud roars from outside his house. When Sat looks out the window, he sees many flying monsters. This episode comes to an end.